What I want to do is dive into the secret truths around IRAs and the taxes that come with these IRAs. Be sure and stick around though to the end today because I'm going to show you how to master your IRA strategy and a lot more. All right, let's kick it off. Good day, everybody. Chris Herline here of REAP Financial, host of Retire Ready TV on KXAN and host for 10 years now on KLBJ's Wealth Radio every Saturday, 11 a.m. Types of IRAs, there's a bunch out there. SEP IRAs, simple IRAs, traditional IRAs, Roth IRAs, and more. These are the ones we see most often. More likely, you have one of these. And they come in different shapes and sizes, different contribution limits different rules around putting money in or taking money out better said so let's talk through what this looks like because really you want to identify what the most optimal account could be for you depending on your situation we're going to start with a simple ira this is something that you see generally offered with maybe smaller employers and you've got contribution limits on these for 2024 we're looking at around sixteen thousand dollars as a max contribution so they can be somewhat limited when compared to an employer 401k, which have higher contribution limits. But simple IRAs are pretty straightforward. The employer can add dollars to these, basically contribute for you kind of like a 401k at work. Again, a lot of employers these days are offering more of the 401k option, but if you got a simple out there, be sure you're maxing it out. And remember, there are contribution limits tied with it. Then we get over to traditional IRAs. Traditional IRAs, this is the one we, we see the most with successful families that have been stockpiling cash in these things for years. Contribution limits are lower on these things though. Uh, $7,000 a year here in 2024. If you're over 50, you can do a $1,000 catch up. That's 8,000 for the year. And then we go to a Roth IRA. A Roth IRA, my favorite account, you're able to contribute up to $7,000 a year. Or if you're over 50, thousand dollar catch up that makes eight thousand now the question i get is chris can i do both yes you can actually do both but the total contribution limit amount between the two accounts aggregate is that seven thousand if you're under 50 so you know do the math you go 50 50. now why would somebody do the traditional versus the roth well we're wired our financial religion is to get tax deductions today as of the day of this recording tax rates haven't been this low in 44 years so why are we chasing tax deduction when we know they'll likely be higher down the road? That's what we're talking about. Well, the traditional IRA gets you that small tax deduction today. It comes right off the bottom line. The Roth IRA, you don't get the deduction today. That's why the Roth is actually the smallest account we see in people's plans. But the long-term benefit is great. On the traditional, not so great. Roth IRAs provide tax-free growth forever. Total control of the money when you're in your retirement years, never subject to required distribution, always tax-free, goes tax-free to your heirs. Traditional IRA, you're getting that small tax deduction today, but every time you go to pull money out down the road, well, it's gonna be 100% taxed at the mercy of whatever tax rates are in the next couple decades. So you think about it, you want control of your taxes in retirement, you want control of your taxes today, I, I know it's a tug of war. But if you're like me, you believe taxes will be higher. The Roth can really make a, a real lasting impact. And I, I'm gonna explain this a little bit further because if you are taking money out of this account down the road, and let's say you've got 10,000 a month you want to pull out of this as part of your budget. If it's coming out of a traditional IRA, you gotta pull 12,000 a month out to net your 10. You gotta pay taxes, right? The Roth, you need 10, all you have to do is take 10. So what happens is this major compounding effect. When you're taking an additional $2,000 a month out in the example I'm giving you out of that traditional IRA, that's a lot of money, 24,000 a year plus, that's not breaking a sweat for you any longer. In the Roth, those tax dollars don't have to come out. More money working for you. So when we do simple analysis for families that are looking to retire or for those of you maybe in your 20s, 30s, 40s going, should I do Roth or should I do traditional? Simple math shows that you could have hundreds of thousands, if not well over a million dollars more in your retirement accounts in late life just because more money is staying with you along the journey. It's incredible. And then if you're going to do the math on it, 
calculate how much more you'd have down the road versus the small tax deduction you're getting today. It's a really important decision, particularly for those of you that are younger that have a lot of time to let these things season for you. Now, another IRA, the SEP IRA. The SEP IRA is for self-employed individuals. Um, there are some rules that come with these. If you do have employees, there are some obligations to fund these after a certain period of time. They call it a testing period. But the SEP IRA is a phenomenal account because you can put up to $69,000 a year in it as of 2024, or up to 25% of your earnings. Now you have to be self-employed. You have, this is not, if you're, if you're W-2, you cannot participate in this stuff. But what if you're W-2? What if you have a steady paycheck, but you got a side hustle? You got, you own a company, you do consulting, 1099 work. That would actually qualify you for the SEP. Now, question again, I, I we always get is, is this, can I do a SEP and a traditional IRA? The answer is yes, because as long as you have earned income, you can contribute to an IRA, Roth or traditional. As long as you have self-employment income, you can contribute to a SEP. Now, take it a step further. What if you're employed, have a W-2 paycheck, can you do a 401k, an IRA, and a SEP IRA? The answer is yes. Now, you may not have enough discretionary income to be maxing all of these out. The point is, you got a lot of flexibility. Now, downsides of IRAs. Let's talk about it. The number one that comes to mind is you don't have liquidity. In most cases, you're gonna lock this money up to at least age 59 and a half. So if you're putting money in in your 20s, this is money for the long game. It's not money you're gonna be looking to tap in the event of an emergency or something to that extent. If you do have to tap it, what comes with that? Well, on a traditional IRA, the money would come out, any dollar you take out would be taxable in the year you take it out because you got a tax deduction on the front. You also are hit with a 10% penalty, pretty steep on any dollar that comes out. 10% of that will go to the government on top of the tax bill until you're age 59 and a half. And this is true of SEP IRAs, simple IRAs, and traditional IRAs. But let's talk about the Roth IRA. How does this differ from the other three? Well, the cool thing about a Roth IRA is it can provide liquidity in the event you needed it for emergency or something along the journey, but you're limited on what you can touch. So let's say you're putting $5,000 a year into your Roth IRA. Now it's grown to 25,000. Let's say that you've put 20,000 in over the years and with growth, it's now at 20,000. Well, the IRS says that you can actually throughout the years, take money out of the Roth IRA without a tax, without a penalty, as long as it's what's called your basis, as long as it's the dollars you put in. You cannot touch the earnings, none of the growth until age 59 and a half. Now, remember Roth forever grows tax-free and after 59 and a half, it comes out tax-free. But what if you had to take all the money out of the Roth? Well, any dollar that is considered growth above your basis would not only be taxed as income, but also penalized. And remember, you already paid tax on that money to get it in because you didn't get the tax deduction. It's almost like a double tax. Now, even though it's the growth, that's where the Roth can really provide some liquidity, but you gotta be careful. We like money in different places. On this channel, I've talked for years about tax diversification, spreading things out. We want money in different accounts so that in the event you need it, not only can you access it, but it's likely tax different. Heavily, maybe it's tax to cap gains rates, or maybe it's not taxed at all, but you want that flexibility. So the Roth also has something called a five-year rule. To be able to access money in the Roth, you at least have needed to have that Roth for five years. So that's the first five year. And then when you convert money from IRAs to a Roth, we talk about that a lot on this channel, that conversion must season for five years before those dollars can be utilized, particularly the growth. So there are some additional rules that come with the Roth, just along with the additional benefits with the Roth. That's very different than the traditional IRA, the SEP IRA, and the simple IRA. Now, what if you need liquidity? You're saying, I'm gonna get hit with penalties well before 59 and a half. I wanna be clear about something. On these pre-tax accounts that I'm talking about, there's a lot of misconception. I've met with people before that go, oh, after 59 and a half, I'm, I'm good. I'm never gonna pay tax. And I'm like, what? And they're like, yeah, after 59 and a half, there's no penalty. Well, that's true, there's no penalty, but there's total tax. 100% of those accounts, other than the Roth, will be taxed. So don't miss that. 
And this is why you want to spread things out. You need to have a strategy, a saving strategy that really aligns with your proximity to retire when you're wanting to do this. Now, we also get questions around loans. Can you borrow from your IRA, any of these IRAs? In most cases, you cannot. You can do what's called a 60-day rollover. So let's say you had an IRA, it's all taxable, and you took $100,000 out to purchase a home, and you're able to somehow get $100,000 to the penny back into the IRA. As long as you took that money out and put the exact dollar amount back in within 60 days, no taxes, no penalty. But be careful, you miss it by one day, 100% of it would be taxable. If you don't put the exact amount in, every dollar will be taxed and penalized. So it's called a roll, a 60-day rollover. And the thing is, is that you can only be done once per year. That's per calendar year, not every 12 months. So be mindful of that. But when it comes to loans, that's typically something you're gonna find with your traditional 401ks and your Roth 401ks. You can, in many cases, borrow from your employer plan. So this is how all of these things work differently. Hey, just a quick tip here. Visit us at reapfinancial.com to take advantage of the free retirement resources available right there on the homepage. Also, leave your questions and comments below around content that you want me to record on future videos. All right, let's talk about one of the last IRAs. It's called an inherited IRA. And this is what you would receive from your parents, a family member, that type of thing. And the rules have changed dramatically around these in the last couple of years with the SECURE Act 2.0. So what we're dealing with here under today's law is when you inherit this money, this is not an account that you can put new money into. You cannot contribute to this IRA. This is what's called a beneficiary IRA. And the money in there can stay invested upon inherited, being inherited. You, you don't necessarily have to sell the holdings. A lot of times that will depend on how the trustee or the executor distributes that to you. But when you do go to take money out of that, if it's a traditional IRA, it will be taxed 100% as income. So be mindful. Here's the other kicker. Under the SECURE Act 2.0, you got to take this money out within 10 years. There's been some confusion around, are you forced to take a little bit out each year, like a required distribution? Under today's law, as of now, you could literally leave the money in there for 10 years, but it's got to be taken out within 10 years of you inheriting that. Now, a strategy may be to leave the money in there, let it compound for you over the next decade, but be mindful that every dollar that you take out will be taxed as income. And it could create, if it's if it's $100,000 or multiple $100,000, it could create a substantial tax burden when you go to take it out on that 10-year rule. Now, a Roth IRA, this can be inherited as well. It's be a beneficiary Roth IRA. These dollars, again, must be distributed within 10 years. But when you do distribute, it's tax-free. So, Remember the strategy I just mentioned about maybe letting it cook and defer for 10 years? That, that makes a lot of sense with an inherited Roth IRA because, again, that money could double, maybe triple over the next 10 years. When you go to take out that large lump sum, 100% tax-free to you. So consult with a fiduciary advisor when you go to start making these type of decisions. All right, to learn more about fiduciary advisors, be sure and watch my video, Avoid IRS Control, Ways to Master Your IRA Strategy.